from Atlanta. 11 Alive Weekend Morning starts now. Good morning. It's 9.30 on your Sunday. Thanks for joining us here on 11 Alive. We have Wes Peary in our weather center tracking some severe weather. Looks like we could see some storms, maybe even, I don't know, tornadoes later today. Yeah, yeah. Unfortunately, that's what we're looking at the risk for. Some tornadoes, damaging straight line winds, which may bring down trees, cause power outages. It's going to be a very, very busy afternoon and really a very long evening for folks across central Georgia. And that includes our counties that we cover in central Georgia. But we're, we're good. We have several hours until things start to look a little bit nastier outside. Atlanta, we have at least three, maybe even four hours uh, until things start to get very nasty. So enjoy it. It's 56 degrees. Yeah, we don't have a whole lot of sunshine, but at least temperatures are pretty nice, especially across central Georgia. 60s or nearly 60 rather. Eatonton, Thomason, 59. Looks like we have a couple spots still stuck in the 40s. Clayton, Dalton at 49 and 46 degrees respectively. We're watching as the showers are now beginning to show up uh, on the picture. They will begin to move in first across northwest Georgia. Not worried about severe weather across northwest Georgia until about uh, 11 o'clock or noon. And then after that, things start to turn interesting. Three different levels of threats we're worried about. Level 3 out of 5, level 2 out of 5, and level 1 out of 5. This area I'm most concerned about the development of some strong tornadoes possible later on this afternoon. I'll outline who I think could see those tornadoes and when I think the possible severe weather will be coming through in your town coming up in a little bit, Christy. And the South is not the only area getting hit with severe weather. About 52 million Americans are under the threat of severe winter weather lasting at least through the weekend, covering more than 2,500 miles. And right behind that, frigid temperatures for next week from California to the East Coast, snow, rain, flooding. NBC's Morgan Chesky is tracking it all. From West Coast flooding to a Northeast freeze encasing entire homes in ice, brutal winter storms have left millions digging out before they dig in for the next one, expected to track coast to coast. February has been absolutely incredible and record setting. In California, Sierra Nevada, up to 25 feet of snow in the shortest month of the year. A blessing for ski resorts, a nightmare in the valleys below. Heavy rains brought floods and in some areas, sinkholes swallowing whole roads. A lot of fast moving water down the river, down the street. In the Midwest, heavy wet snow too much for the roof at this Wisconsin Lodge. No one inside when it collapsed. Look at all the destruction. In South Carolina, a rare winter tornado. The high winds damaging at least five homes, but no one injured. To the northeast, dangerous conditions led to this wreck outside Philadelphia. While in New York City, a line for tickets to Saturday Night Live incredible looks more like a mountain base camp. Ooh, that is crazy. In LA, recent storms have brought fears of mudslides, prompting officials to keep a close eye with even more rain on the way. Nearly a year later, Sacramento District Attorney announcing no charges will be filed against the two officers who shot and killed a 22 year old last March. Sacramento DA said no, no crimes were committed in the shooting death of Stephen Clark. Clark was shot and killed in his grandparents' backyard in South Sacramento. Officers were responding to a call about a person breaking car windows when a Sacramento County Sheriff's helicopter led them to Clark, who started to run away. Clark was unarmed and carrying a cell phone. The officers say they thought he had a gun. A car crashed into a crowd in New Orleans, killing two people and injuring six others. Five of those injured were taken to the hospital, three in critical condition. The crash comes as the city begins to prepare for Mardi Gras. Police say the 32-year-old is the son of a New Orleans police officer. Police are testing to see if he was intoxicated. This week marks 54 years since the historic Selma to Montgomery March, referred to as Bloody Sunday. It was part of a series of civil rights protests that happened in 1965 in Alabama. This morning, people boarded buses here in Atlanta, headed to Selma to take part in today's commemorative ceremonies. Nick Sturdivant is live at the West End Mall in southwest Atlanta, where the group loaded up and left early this morning. Good morning, Nick. Yeah, good morning, Christy. Very early this morning. The group left a little after 6 o'clock this morning. 
two busloads of people are making the trip to Selma, Alabama. We caught up with the group just before they left. They were holding signs. And one thing we noticed, there are a lot of young people making the trip. Again, they are headed to Alabama to commemorate the Selma to Montgomery March, also known as Bloody Sunday, a big part of uh, in the passage of the Voting Rights Act of 1965. And we talked to a few people making the trip, and they talked about what it meant for them to be going. And we're just as, as, so excited about uh, having the opportunity to register and vote and, and be a part of the political process. And, you know, I'm, just, I'm looking forward to walking across that bridge to see how, to, give a, to get a feel of how they were feeling when they were doing the, during the march. And Christy, a lot of excitement for the group. Again, a lot of young people, a lot of first timers going to Selma, Alabama. When the group gets to Selma, they will attend a church service and then at 2.30, they will take part, take part in a commemorative march there. And I think the trip to Selma is about three hours and some change, so they should be arriving about now. Roughly. Roughly? All right, all right. We'll keep up with yeah. them. What a great day. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Nick. Coming up this weekend on The Reveal. A gifted student and musician, but is he also someone to fear? I can't help but to think that David fits a profile of a group of people that many people are afraid of. A program designed to help doctors deal with addiction or depression. They asked, you know, is this, is this a drug problem? Are you sure you're not using drugs? Now many doctors say it's the program that's being abused. I think he thought there was no way out. How a medical error at her local pharmacy changed this woman's life. It was in excruciating pain. It felt like I was literally on fire. This Sunday at 6 on The Reveal. And as you're getting ready for the week ahead, we want to give you a quick look at the top five major stories we'll be covering this week. Number one, accused of killing his parents, Keith Sylvester is scheduled to be in court on Monday. The 47-year-old man is charged with murder in the deaths of his mother and stepfather. The couple was found strangled inside their burning home last July. Number two, kicking and Dunkin'. In celebration of the new MLS season, Dunkin' Donuts offering medium iced coffee Mondays. DD Perks members can get the drink for a dollar every Monday. And Atlanta begins its season at home on Saturday, March 9th, against Hartford Athletic at Fifth Third Bank Stadium in Kennesaw. Number three, get ready for the big celebrations in the Big Easy. Mardi Gras begins this week, a time of food, festivities, fun, lots of music, lots of eating. Fat Tuesday, which is March 5th this year, is celebrated as it marks the day before the season of Lent begins. For some religions, Lent includes 40 days of fasting between Ash Wednesday and Easter Sunday. Number four, honoring women. International Women's Day is Friday, March 8th. It's a day to honor the achievements and the advancement of women's rights. It is a public holiday in many countries around the world, and this year will be the first where it's celebrated as a public holiday in Germany. And number five, taking the message to the streets to help end homelessness and trafficking among young women, Covenant House is hosting a sleep out event on March 8th with just a cardboard box and a sleeping bag. The group plans to show the women they're not alone in this fight by sleeping under the stars. If you want to take part and get more information, go to covenanthousega.org. All right, Wes, you're keeping your eye on some potentially severe weather this yes. afternoon for us. Yes, it's going to be a very, very busy afternoon, a very, very busy evening. I'm uh, most concerned about folks across central Georgia for the possibility of severe weather. But here is the good news. We have several hours until things really start to turn hairy, at least in the Atlanta metro area. So we have until about 2 o'clock. That's when the threat for severe weather really begins to ramp up. So those brunch plans up until 2 should be good. After 2 o'clock, pay attention to your phone. You may get an alert sent to you. For a warning. Always good to download that 11 Alive app and mm -hmm. have that place where you plan to shelter in your head so you know where to go That's right. to be safe. All right, still ahead with a love of cars. One man believed he found his passion, but when life changed courses, he changed directions. How he's continuing to give part of himself even after losing part of himself.